Increasing sales with Google Ads for your e-commerce brand, it's really not too difficult if you are implementing the right strategies and if you're implementing the right tactics. In fact, do it right for an enough of a period of time and you will end up getting results like these ones right here on my screen. And regardless of what strategy you have been following so far with Google Ads, regardless of where you have even gotten with your e-commerce brand right now, these seven Google Ads hacks, which I'm about to mention in this video, can literally change your e-commerce store's life, can take it to the next level by basically 10xing their Sales. Now, you might be thinking, how is it possible to 10x sales with just seven different Google Ads hacks? That's simply because I have been personally able to do it with my own e-commerce brands as well as with client e-commerce brands under my Google Ads agency, Euro Marketing, over and over again. So let's just get started with the first ad hack. By the way, some of these hacks later on in the video will completely blow up your mind, so you need to watch this video until the end. But hack number one, it's to run competitor search ads. Now hold on, before you start thinking exactly what I just said and end up confusing yourself, hear me out. A lot of the times on my YouTube channel, what I've recommended is that you run something called a branded search campaign. And if you look right here on my screen, if we search up, for example, an e-commerce brand by the name of Inspire Uplift, which is one of the best e-commerce brands, by the way, we can see a branded search campaign in effect. It's essentially running a search ad for your own e-commerce brand and for the keywords which your e-commerce brand ranks for. So Inspire Uplift, when I type that in, as you can see, this is a search ad coming up right when I type it in and it's basically just taking us directly to their website. I'm not gonna click on it so that they don't get charged for my click, but essentially link number one, link number two, it's the same exact thing, but they're paying for link number one. And that's simply because of this hack, which I just mentioned, which is running competitor search ads. Now let's kind of change up the search a bit and search up this other e-commerce brand by the name of Madani. It's essentially a furniture store. As you can see right here, it says madani.com. But here's the thing now, when you search up for the brand Madani, what happened was Madani is all the way right here. It's number three and they don't have a branded search campaign running anywhere here or ranking because of their competitor. So as you can see, when I typed in Modani, the first one was Wayfair.com. They are now taking the sales for Modani whenever somebody searches up for this search term. And instead of a person going to their official website, they now get taken over to Wayfair's website. And that's where they're selling this brand's products. But that's not enough. Number two right here, as you can see, is Ashley Furniture. And they're also running a search ad for this brand name itself. But in this case, they have not even kind of mentioned the brand's name itself at all. I mean, it says home furniture and decor save up to 40% off at Ashley. That's all it says. There is no kind of identification with this brand, which means most likely Ashley Furniture does not sell the products by Modani. Instead, what they're doing is they're trying to rank for their competitor search term because they know that this search term right here has a lot of heavy demand. So essentially, this Google Ads hack can literally 10x your sales simply because whoever your competitors are, if it's Madani, if it's Ashley Furniture, if you're in the furniture niche, or whoever it is, first step, go ahead and do research into your competitors so you know who the best ones are within your niche. And then number two, start a competitor branded search campaign. It's as simple as directly targeting their main keywords and then ranking for them. And in terms of the ad copies, you can do what Wayfair did right here, include that brand's name itself within the actual title or within the description, or you can do what Ashley Furniture did right here where they don't have any type of identification with this brand. So it's essentially just pretending to just land up here all of a sudden when somebody types up this branded search term. So very useful hack because I'm sure you have a lot of very successful competitors out there and there's no better way to get their sales and get their traffic if you want to go that route. Of course, this also means that there's other competitors which are your competitors and also this brand's competitors which you're trying to rank for doing the same exact thing. So oftentimes these competitor branded search terms will be a bit expensive. So, but if you can get it right, if you can get the right ad copy and so on and so forth, this can be extremely useful for you in the long term in getting sales. But let's move on now to hack number two, which is to use a standard shopping campaign to then boost the results 
for a performance max campaign. Now, this is pretty straightforward. And I've always, by the way, recommended that if you're starting a brand new ad account, you actually start off with a standard shopping campaign and then go the performance max campaign route. However, here's the interesting thing. Along with standard shopping campaigns, you also have the ability to directly just start performance max campaigns and go that route, especially if your Google ads account already has a lot of data. But even then I recommend you start some standard shopping campaigns and then kind of put into the mix certain performance max campaigns. So here's exactly what I mean. If we now go on over to a Google ads account, which is under my Google ads agency, your marketing, which if you're currently doing $30,000 or more per month in revenue, you need a little bit of extra help scaling to the next level with Google ads. Go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can possibly work together and make that happen. But now we see here, we have two different types of shopping campaigns running, actually three different types. So the first one is a performance max campaign, very straightforward, very clear. And I'm just gonna stop comparing the time periods. By the way, I'm recording this video in August 24. That's why the date range only goes up to August 24. But now we see that within the last 30 days, the first performance max campaign got us a 2.46x ROAS. The second campaign right here, which is a smart shopping campaign. That's right, smart shopping because this has yet not been upgraded by us and that too on purpose. That's because this campaign, if we look at all time data, used to perform the best. So that's essentially why we still have this campaign running, but it had gotten a 5X ROAS and it still to this day performs the best. But the reason why we want to use a smart shopping campaign, or even in this case, a standard shopping campaign, which is this one right here, to then move into performance max is simply because standard shopping campaigns let us control more of the variables. So what we used to see is that because standard shopping campaigns, because smart shopping campaigns were running, and we were controlling more of the things, they were getting the right kind of data in the account and that too very quickly. Plus, they were ultra profitable. So because of this, we were able to run those campaigns for a longer period of time and as a result, get more and more data for a longer period of time, which we then could use come the time to actually transition fully into performance max. And that's not the only account where we're trying this strategy. This other account right here, it's full on standard shopping. As you can see in the last 30 days alone, the ROAS isn't too great at 1.68. But now if we change the time period to the last 14 days and stop comparing, we can see the ROAS gets a better, we, it actually becomes a 2.22. And now if we change it one more time to just the last seven days alone, we can see yet again, the ROAS has increased to a 2.83. So these are all standard shopping commits. This account, we already tried performance max. It completely failed. So this is the exact hack we're taking where we have a lot of standard shopping campaigns running here along with some dynamic remarketing. But the next step here is to slowly start incorporating performance max, maybe for the best selling products only, or maybe some other type of segmentation, and then slowly transition our entire store with, in this case, with certain products into Pmax before actually fully diving in. This is one of the best hacks I've used to date when it comes to performance max and just Google ads in general, it has increased our ROAS significantly. I mean, just comparing the last seven days to the previous seven days, we can see a total of a 53% increase in the ROAS and also all of the other metrics are increasing. So conversions have gone down slightly, but overall conversion value has gone up and the ROAS has gone up. So those two are the most important and that's exactly what's happening here. So use this Google ads hack to your advantage. Again, start standard shopping or smart shopping if you can right now, and then transition slowly into Pmax. Don't just go right into Pmax, especially with brand new ad accounts. But number three Google ads hack is to focus on AOV. So I'm gonna take you guys yet to another Google ads account, which is under my Google ads agency, Euro Marketing, and show you a little bit of information. So if we now change this to this month only, and if we look at the overall AOV, because I've added an AOV column within this Google ads account, we can see the AOV is 762 Canadian dollars. That's right, 762. And the interesting thing is we only got about 108 sales within this account, which equals to about $67,000. Now, you might think of it as a very big number because you know it's only 108 sales. But let me go ahead and open up the calculator to show you why AOV is important and why if you don't focus on anything within your Google Ads account, within your e-commerce brand, the only thing you should focus on is AOV is because of this. So let's say now, let's change the AOV from $762 to let's say $20. Let's say 108 sales times 20, that's $2,000. That's right, if your AOV was $20 only, this 108 sales would have only led you to $2,160 
in total revenue that is nowhere close to what this ad account did and as you can see it spent seven thousand dollars to get those hundred eight sales obviously because of the overall competition within this ad account but that's the beauty about aov if you start focusing on aov you are able to achieve a roas like this one right here where we're doing a 9x roas simply because of the high aov now if it was only two thousand dollars we would be in a very negative loss right here so that's essentially why AOV is so important. Even changes this to let's say $50 even. That equals to only about $5,400 in sales. As you can see, barely enough to scrape by, let alone do almost six figures every single month. And by the way, this number right here is actually above 100,000 because Google Ads has not fully tracked every single sale. So that's the power of AOV. That's why if you don't focus on anything else, focus on AOV, that's how you're gonna scale your Google Ads account. And that's the biggest hack I can tell you about let's move on now to the next hack on the list which is to have a multiple phase approach for your products what do i mean by this exactly i've covered this in detail in a lot of my other videos so i'm really not gonna go too in depth into the nitty-gritty details but when i talk about phases what i'm talking about is number one the testing phase number two profitability phase number three scaling phase these three phases you need to have campaigns surrounding these three phases because if you don't then your products are going to be stuck inside of one campaign forever similarly to how my original strategy was in the beginning which was just to launch one general testing campaign and just leave your products in there scale them there too let them die there too and everything in between in 2022 2023 that's really not an ideal strategy because you are just depending too much on one campaign and i've realized depending on just one campaign itself is a very bad thing in fact i could probably put it as a hack itself not to depend on one campaign but seriously you want to always be having kind of this diversified approach in 2022 2023 and onwards especially when you want to test your products when you want to scale and so on and so forth and that's really what i've seen work the best i mean here with this ad account this specific campaign right here is a testing campaign but it's testing all the general products within the store which were not yet tested whereas this pmax campaign is a scaling campaign because this is targeting only the best sellers and then we have this strategy laid out for multiple different accounts and multiple different countries within each account so within this ad account alone we also have canada campaign going on here we have a uk campaign going on here and the strategy stays the same regardless of which country you are targeting that's the beauty of this strategy so you always want to have multiple phases especially in 2022 2023 and even go a bit further than that i recommend also segmenting out your product so within the testing phase you might actually have five or ten different campaigns because let's say you sell outdoor items and you have like 10 different categories so i recommend segmenting your testing campaigns based on each category so one campaign for maybe you know sports accessories outdoors the other one for fishing only and so on and so forth so segmentation by multiple phases that's the way to go and one of the biggest hacks i can recommend to you next one is mixing and matching your campaign types for the maximum results now the main main reason why within the last 30 days this ad account right here is able to do such amazing numbers i mean a 9.28 x row has done roughly seventy-five thousand dollars in total revenue is because we don't just have shopping campaigns running here we only have about 10 different campaigns but some of them are shopping some of them are dynamic remarketing campaigns some of them are branded search campaigns for different countries others are dynamic search campaigns and even more we're putting in youtube campaigns we're trying out display and so on and so forth that's the beauty about google that's how you achieve the best possible results you in 2022 2023 always want to be taking a diversified approach period if you want to achieve any level of success and growth i mean there's just way too many of your competitors out there just focusing on shopping shopping campaigns and shopping ads are becoming the next facebook ads you don't want to just rely on them because you're going to be in a big loss if you just focus on them and you're going to be also facing a lot of fluctuation so make it easy for yourself just diversify into different campaign types i mean you're already using google ads so why not just diversify further within google itself and sub segment out with different campaign types and the beauty by the way is whatever campaign you decide to launch it's gonna gather data on an account level and your shopping campaigns if that's your focus are gonna be able to use this data to then perform better themselves so that's really the major benefit of using multiple campaign types and one of the biggest hacks i can recommend to you let's move on now to the second to last kind of hack that i have for you which is to focus on the bad slash low performing products now if you look right here within this ad account and actually i'm going to be changing ad accounts very shortly to show you how we segment out different things because 
we have certain campaigns running for the best performing products. We have certain campaigns for just testing. But if you look like right here, we have two different campaigns for the low performing products. The first campaign right here at the very top is the low performance clicks products, meaning those products which barely got any clicks, maybe their CTRs were very low. We wanna launch them within this top campaign right here and run it at a very low bid. I mean, as you can see, CTRs already fairly decent at a 0.89 and we're giving them a second chance. Way too many e-commerce store owners, even following my strategies, just completely end up getting rid of a product forever and they just give it one chance. I mean, that's not necessarily the right kind of strategy to go about with when it comes to Google Ads, because really there's various different reasons why that product might not have found success in that original campaign. Maybe the other products kind of overlapped that main one, or maybe the bid was just not good enough. So keeping these things in mind, you wanna kind of give it another chance with a low performance campaign. The second campaign right here is based on those products which didn't get too many impressions. So as you can see, both of them are running fairly well. And again, very low bids, hence why they haven't really spent too much money, but you definitely wanna give your bad and low performing products a second try. But this brings me to the final hack, which every single e-commerce store owner should be doing, and that is using existing data to then optimize the feed further. Now, there's really no more excuse for not using existing data because I released a video on my channel where I go over how to find this data even with performance max campaigns. So, a performance max campaign, which is fully relying on Google's algorithm, which barely gives you any options, if that can provide you the data that you need to then optimize further, there's no excuse for you left anymore as to why you haven't done it yet. Because to be honest with you, if you wanna pay less, if you wanna get more results at the same ad spend or a lower ad spend, you need to put more time, effort, energy, and even money into optimizing the back end, into optimizing the product data feed. There's no other way around it because like I mentioned earlier, there's too many people just doing the same exact thing as you are with shopping campaigns. They're doing all these fancy strategies. They have search campaigns going on and so on and so forth. So let me ask you this. Where are you standing out of the crowd then? If you're like majority of store owners, the answer probably is you're not standing out of the crowd. You're trying to put all your eggs in one basket and just focus on those certain campaign types. Well, that is good to do, but then you want to make it better, make those campaigns perform better with backend feed optimizations, with Google Merchant Center optimizations, and so on and so forth. I have a whole Google Ads playlist on my channel that goes over all these things and more. I mean, there is no excuse for you. But if you still need a little bit of extra help scaling your e-commerce brand to the next level and you're already doing $30,000 or more per month in revenue, go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can possibly work together and make that happen. But if you found any type of value in this video, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and watch any of these two videos right in front of my face to take your e-commerce journey to the next level, and I will see you in my next video.